Here we are with Substation Design Suite. What we're going to look at is see how this trench model was created. It was created using three sketches. We are going to look at how to unsuppress cutouts in the trench models. We're going to just look at some details of the trench itself. And we're going to place pipe supports. And most of this will be done automatically. We'll get into the model and we'll take a look at the model itself. Here's a finished model. We have end plates on. We have holes if we wish to have holes. We have our cover plates placed. And we have a different size of trench coming off the side with a gap in the trench. If you look at the design of this trench, there's a number of utilities that I'm finding that will do a T intersection similar to this to save on buying elbows and corners or having to do a miter. So I'm going to be showing this method, especially with dual channels of trench that we may want this more often. Well, we're also going to look at the standard miter corner. So our tool comes out with a miter corner where, where you would miter the corner with straight pieces. And then we're going to look at putting in holes or cutouts wherever needed. And you can see these cutouts can be added. We're going to look at how the trench was created. We're going to look at the sketches at this stage. So if we look in the browser, we can see a sketch here. And I will make that visible. And we can see the sketch that was created. Now, when Substation Design Suite creates the trench, it creates it down the center line of the sketch. So the, the line here is the center line of the model that's going to be placed. We edit that sketch. The dimensioning to place the sketch, the difference is the width of the 4016 trench. The gap up here, you can see that that distance here is the width divided by a half. Here we have the width for the overhang for the T. So you can see that layout, how that is set up. Now, the trench body is built to fit this. And we'll look at that in a little while. If we look at the next sketch, let's turn off the visibility of this one. We'll look at each sketch. Here is the sketch for making the 2012. You notice that there's construction lines at different places. At these construction lines, the SDS trench will not be made and will skip. The SDS trench tool will create a trench piece on any line. So if you have a small dot in your sketch, it will try to create a trench on that. So you want to have a clean sketch consisting of only the lines that you need. You can see there's a work point here or a sketch point. It's hard to see. There's a sketch point. I wonder if I can if I edit that sketch. Let's take a look. And you can see that sketch point is here. It will not try to make it on the sketch point because it's construction lines. That sketch point was just to identify where to start my sketch. This is just strictly straight dimensions coming in to locate my trench sketch. The third sketch in here, let's turn off the visibility of that, is projected lines from the original 4016 sketch. So if we look at the 4016 sketch, it has the four lines. This one is just the two lines from that one. These lines are going to be where the pipe supports are attached. I'll turn off that visibility. So first of all, what we want to do is turn on the 4016 sketch, right click and make it visible. The sketch will be only, the trench will be only made on visible lines. I'll come up to my substation design below grade tools settings. 
And the trench piece I'm going to place is T's, L's, and X's formed in straight sections. And I will select the plastic baton. That's the style that I've created in here. And I'll hit Save. With that, I'm going to create trench from sketch. I can select my sketch. Now it's going to bring in an eye part. It's going to use this eye part to create the trench. An eye part will not be used in the final assembly model, but it will be used to create this. So I'm just going to create the, the top family. That's only what I size this for. And I'll say done. And here are our trench pieces. And we have our, li our lids and we have our trench pieces. And I'll save that, of course. Next step, what we want to do is add the trench 2012 frame. So let's make that one visible. And we'll turn off the visibility of the other sketch. And now I'm going to build my trench piece along there. So again, I come up to my trench section. And remember, it's an eye part. So now I can fit my 2012 in here. So I'm going to look up 2012 PED. That's a pedestrian trench. I have both pedestrian and light traffic. And I'll say done. And this will build along here. And it's going to have a miter corner. And it's going to build along that edge. Presently, this style of trench will not do a 45s, and we'll look at that later. So now we have our pieces of, of trench in here with the lids, and we have our trench. The last section I want to do, I better save it because we should save and save often. The last section is going to be we're going to place pipe supports. Now I've designed the pipe supports to be uh, 60 inch spacing throughout my trench. And if you recall, what we did with the pipe supports, we only have two lines for that. So it's going to build pipe supports on these two lines. So I'll make these visible. And if we highlight them, you can see the sketch that it's going to run our pipe supports along. Now, these are pipe supports, but it can be anything in your imagination that you can put inside the trench, change the style of the model, and you'll be able to place these in. So let's zoom in on that. And you can see my sketch is right sticking right there. So I want to build it on that sketch. So I'm going to come up and change my settings trench. I'm going to change it to pipe supports. Now I'll hit save. And I'll make trench from sketch. In this case, I didn't have enough time to make a variable pipe support, so I only have one pipe support in the design. So we'll see it in the iLogic or in the um, iPart. It only has the one supports. And I'll say done. And with that, it's going to build pipe supports at 60 inch centers throughout the trench. Of course, this can be configured to be different types of pipe supports. If I look down the trench face, you can see the pipe support here. I'll open one up. And you can see the model has two pipe supports in it. Now we may want to count these pipe supports. I'm going to come down here and you'll see the pipe supports down here as well. You can see the pipe supports going down here as well. So often you want to count your pipe supports. So I did a little trick on, on counting the pipe supports. It didn't work out, but again, a little bit more time, I could make it a little more elegant. So I'm going to save this and we'll take a look at the build material real quick. Let's come up to the bill. And let's enable this. And you can see the pipe supports are created. But if you look at the pipe supports, I come up with 13 pipe supports. So I am calculating the proper pipe supports. But 
somehow I got the UL for unit list in there. So I'll 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 work I can work that out to be more elegant in the future. Say done. Now what I also had mentioned, I'm gonna close off, don't need to see that visibility, is that in the sketch here for the twenty twelve you can see we have some 45s here. Right now, the SPS does not do 45s in this style of trench. I think we could work something out to be more automated and configure it. But in this case, what I did, I created a tool of an assembly, and I'm going to make it visible. Where is my visibility? and I can place this in where I need it to be. So I use the same pieces and I can do, I can work on that attachment. To place this constraint, what we need to do is have our selection on feature priority. I'll place my constraint. I'm gonna grab that work point from the UCS in the model. And I'm going to attach it to the work point here. And there I have them attached. That's my little piece for doing the 45s at this stage. Again, we could be a little more elegant in the future. What I want to do now is add some end plates. So I'll come into my below grade tools. And in the menu, I've added some end plates. So I'm going to add this end plate. Come in here. I'm going to select my point. It's going to give me an error because it doesn't want that point. It wants a point in, in behind. So I'll come up here, right click, and select my other. Let's do that again. Select other. And there's my end point. End point here, out of range, do it again. We have to select other over here. We'll add some more end plates. Select other end plate, select other. And over here, if we want an end plate here, we can add the end plate here. And down here, we're going to add an end plate down at the very end. This is a 2012, so we want to make sure we pick our 2012. And there's our end plates. I'm going to save this. So we're going to take a look at a couple other things. And one is looking at the trench bodies. I have a piece of trench here, and that's a full length trench. And let's look at what how that trench is created. So let's open that up. Oh, I gotta change my selection set. Let's open that up. And here you can see the trench assembly. We have uh, bottom, top, endpoints. The key thing here is what I have is a work plane at the very top of the trench, but the XY plane is sank below it. So what we have is that we have customers that want the trench a little bit proud of the gravel. Some don't want it proud. Some, some want it proud in certain locations. So I made that as a parameter that I can adjust the height of that trench piece. So here above XY, I have it at one and a half inches above XY plane. You can add other details to this. I wouldn't add too much champers and fillets to it, but if it's a needed piece, we can add it. What we also have in this trench piece is set up holes and 
and other holes. We can also have a side panel cutout. You don't really see it here, but we can cut out a piece of the side panel from this piece. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to, I'll take it and I will save it as. And I'm going to say um, with holes. So we're going to add some holes to this. Just by un unsuppressing the hole piece, let's unsuppress this. And this is right in the eye, the eye, um, the eye part. And here I can come in here and say, well, I don't want holes on both sides. I can edit the feature, and maybe I only want holes on one side. So let's go holes on one side. Let's pick this side and say OK. So now I have holes on one side. I'll hit Save, and we'll close this. So now in this trench, I can highlight that trench piece. I'm going to right click and replace just that one trench piece with the holes on one side. So let's come into Trench. I'm going to change the date modify. Here's my holes on one side, and there's my holes on one side. The constraints stay the same because the replacement is basically connecting to the same spot. So the constraint on the end plate, find in browser, expand, and you can see the mates still that stay the same. It's just normal inventor functionality. If the faces are the same name, the constraints will stay. You also notice that when I place the end plates using this tool, they do not have a prefix. So they're not project specific. The other pieces, many have a prefix on it where we can. So let's look at the I part that was used to create this. We have a number of work features in here. We come into our document on the web. You can see we come down and we can find this information down towards the bottom. And there's information on what we need for this to be made in examples. We look at the table. I'll edit the I part table. And you can see the table has all our part numbers naming. And we can do quite a lot of work in here. If you look at the bill of material in here, in this case, we are not putting the trench lids in as a count. But in other cases, like this one, this trench one was ran automatically, except for the, the traffic area. And these trench, p trench lids are counted in this example. So if we come into the content editor, we can see our trench and conduit parts. If I come into the plastic baton pieces, you can see I brought in the eye parts, straight cover, and left and right miter joints. Also down here, you can see where the trench end plates were added. And these this is where they are added. You can come in further. If you need to edit these, you will find them in this tab, where you can see the plastic baton Trench pieces, support pieces are all stored in here. That can be extracted and edited if you need to. So with that, we are going to leave this. i like to quickly look at this assembly. We'll take a look at the Trendway trench pieces. So in here, this was an automated piece. This is manually placed, but it could be automated as well. I'm going to right click, we'll open up the trendway, and you can see the shape that is in. The hooks in here are part of the model. Often when you order the trench straights, you'll get the appropriate amount of hooks to place. But if you wanted them counted, you could do the same thing as what we did with the pipe supports. If I come back in here, you can see the lids in here. I'm going to find the lid, find in browser. Of course, it's a pattern. Expand that pattern, and we can see the lids here. The lids are the Trendway lid style, and that's how they're made. So with that, we're finished this presentation, and we'll end it here.